All right, the third treasure, third one is, uh, and I love this, being able to see God, a recovery of sight to the blind. Um, the great proclamation says, our blindness causes us to feel lost and alone. Now, let me just pause right here and say, we were born to be in relationship to God. We were born to be able to see God and to hear God and to experience the presence of God. We were like a like a parent would, like or like a child would with a parent, like a toddler, you know, two years old or four years old, you know. And when that when that toddler, like if they're at Walmart or Kmart or a grocery store or something, all of a sudden the parents are gone and the toddler's walking around, and the toddler realizes Mom, they can't see mom anymore. They can't hear mom anymore. They don't know where she is. She's gone. Well, now what happens is a panic takes over that toddler, and they just start crying and screaming and kind of pitching a fit because they're afraid they've lost them. That's the way we are as human beings. This is what has happened to us. We don't realize it. We don't realize that everybody feels anxious. This is why Jesus says this command the command most often given in the New Testament, he says, do not be afraid. Why? Because we live in fear all the time. We're always afraid something's going to happen. Something's going to happen to our money or something's going to happen to our job or something's going to happen to our children or just something's going to happen to, we don't even know what it is. But the first thing we think of in any circumstance is not how great this is going to turn out. We always worry. We always worry about what could happen or, or won't, what's not going to, we're afraid it's not going to happen when it's supposed to happen. It's because we can't see God anymore and we feel lost and we feel alone and we feel like it's all up to us somehow and we know we can't control anything in the world, really. So it causes us to feel afraid. Jesus was sent to open our eyes to the kingdom of God. It's a recovery of sight to the blind. That's the miracle he does most often. He just wants us to see the kingdom of God, to see God, to see that there's more. That's why he came back. He did, just, did the resurrection. He just didn't resurrect and you know, go to be with the Lord. No, he hung out for 40 days showing himself so people could see who God really is. And who we are supposed to be uh, in when we are in Christ, right? So we we see the resurrected Jesus, and now we know there's life on the other side. And so we don't have to panic uh, about this world and how things are going to turn out um, for us. Prayer, which is the key, is talking to God and listening to God and looking for God. It's all three of those things. It's not just talking to God and talking and talking and giving God our wish list. No, it's talking to God, yeah, but it's also listening. God has something he wants to say he, he, to you, and we won't hear it if we, aren't, if we aren't listening. And we won't hear it if we aren't looking for God, just watching God, and just seeing where he shows up, seeing him show up in a conversation that we have or a circumstance that worked out. God is doing things in our lives all the time and we miss them because we're not paying attention or we're not, we're not thinking in terms of, that wasn't just a coincidence. I think that's God. I thought, I think that's actually God that's doing that. It just didn't work out somehow simultaneously with my prayer. No, that's a prayer that's being answered by God. And our failure our failure to really see that, I think, causes us more relational problems with God than probably just about anything. I think it's where we get really confused. The key to seeing God is prayer. We're motivated to pray by our love for God and our understanding of his power.